Hi, it's Greg Harrell here with another Vim screencast. And uh, tonight I want to look at Vim Projectionist, which is a plugin by T Pope, another great one um, that I have, I think, previously mentioned briefly in one of the screencasts where I was talking about how to move between files. Uh, but specifically, I want to share a, tech, a particular use case that I, I put this uh, plugin to. Um, now, this plugin can do a few things, uh, but the main thing that I use it for is to move around between alternate files. Oops. Uh, which basically, you know, the classic example is like a test file and its implementation. It can be useful to jump back and forth between those. Um, or you might be working in a language like C, which has header files, and you might want to jump forth back and forth between the header and the actual file. So let's have a look at uh, where I've got some projectionist mappings configured. Um, and I do have, you know, C header files as, as an example there. Basically, you can define some pretty sophisticated patterns and globs um, and operate on them in various ways. Uh, but the basic notion is that you have a mapping of uh, a file to its alternate. So, you know, the alternate of a .c file would be a .h file um, and vice versa. If you have a header file, the alternate of that would be a C file. Um, a few, few lines further down, you can see here, I've got um, some JavaScript rules. Um, these show that alternates don't necessarily need to be one-to-one -one mappings, but that you can actually specify a number of possible alternates. Um, and so here you see three different file naming conventions for tests uh, that uh, projections will look for, and it'll jump to the first one it finds if I instruct it to go to the alternate of a file. Uh, now, recently I started playing with a language called Reason where I don't just want to jump back and forth between two files, but there's actually a third kind of file that I would like to uh, potentially navigate to at times. And so those files are the implementation file, the test for the implementation, and a thing called an interface file. So uh, bidirectional mappings aren't going to cut anymore. So basically I'd like to show you uh, how I achieve quick and easy navigation using projectionist uh, when there's more than two files involved. Um, so I'm going to do that on the whiteboard just because it's easier, that, easier to see visually I think than uh, looking straight at the code. But let's make this abstract and, and just assume that we have three, three kinds of files, A, B and C. Um, now if we only had two kinds of files, let's say this was an implementation and this was a header, um, in the Vim projectionist uh, config, we could just basically tell each one that its alternate follows a certain pattern. And basically, when I try to go to the alternate of A, it's going to say, OK, let's search for something that ends in B. Oh, well, look, I found it. Let's jump there. Um, likewise, uh, when I want to go to the alternate of B, um, it'll say, OK, do I have anything with A? And it'll find it and come around here. And so you can effectively cycle around uh, between these. Uh, two file types. When we have three file types at issue, we can actually exploit the ability of projectionists to work with a list of alternates to construct a cycle. Um, so because it will go to the first one that it finds, when we're in an A file, we can say, well, try to go to B first, and if, if that's not there, go to C. Um, so that gives us a, a way of getting from A to B. Um, and for B, we can say try to go to C first, and if that's not there, go to A. So that'll get us to C. And for C, we can say try to go to A and then B. And so that'll get us back to A. But the nice thing about these ordered choices is that if any of these files is missing, we can still do the cycle. So just say this, I was trying to jump from an A and there was no B there, um, it would just not find that and go straight to C. So this will great, gracefully work with kind of any combination of these. So that was the abstract version. Let's look at the concrete version. Um, so if I go down, oops, if I go down here, I can see some reason config here. Um, basically, we start with the implementation files, which all have a .re extension. And we're going to try to jump first to a test file. And if that's not there, we'll jump to an interface file. Um, and then further down here, um, we, if we manage to get to an interface file, we're going to try to go to an implementation, and if that's not there, go to a test. Um, and finally, if we're in a test file, uh, we're going to try first to go to the interface, and if not there, go to a test. Um, so that linkage there reflects the same kind of scheme that I showed up there on the whiteboard. Um, so let me go to a Reason project and 
uh, show you how this works. Um, so I'm going to open a file. So here we are in a in a source file. Um, this one actually doesn't have. If you look here, it doesn't even it doesn't have a test. Uh, doesn't have a, either a test or an implementation. So if I hit the projectionist binding to go to alternate, it just doesn't find anything and offers to create one of the options. Um, but let's go to one which has uh, just two. So you see here, I've got this assert module that has uh, no test, but it does have an interface. Um, so when I'm in the implementation, I can do alternate and it goes to the interface. And if I do it again, I'll, I'll wind back where I started at the uh, implementation. So that's a cycle of two. Um, and if we go a little bit further down here, uh, here's another example. We've got a util module and a test module. So doing alternate goes from implementation to test, doing it again goes from test to implementation. There's a final demo here. I've got one that has all three. So we're going to start in the implementation. If I go to the alternate, I'll wind up in the test. If I go to the alternate of the test, I wind up in the interface. If I go to the alternate of the interface, I wind up back where I began. Um, so colon A enables me to cycle through. If I had a longer cycle than three, I would probably bind that to something a little more ergonomic, but in reality, this is just fine. Um, so that is how to set up cycles uh, of alternates in Vim Projectionist. I encourage you to check out the plugin because it's really great. Uh, and uh, you can never really go wrong with T-Pope, can you? Uh, totally worth, worth the time investment. So I hope you enjoyed this and uh, tune in again soon. Subscribe if you like this stuff because I'll keep putting out Vim screencasts.